The modern workplace culture has been camouflaged over the past years by several layers of hidden fears and uncertainty. However, Brene Brown's classic book, Dare to Lead, is a counter-narrative insight as to how workplace cultures should offer resilience, trust, and vulnerability, and how the leaders that oversee these workplaces can embrace a leadership style that is brave enough to minimize fear and uncertainty. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Elizabeth Van Geerstein, and I'm your Leadership Insider, here to help you fast track your leadership and your career. In this video, we'll be taking a ride into the mind of Brene Brown. If you don't know, she's the author of Dare to Lead. And today I'd like to explore with you some amazing leadership insights that can help you transform your life and turn your workplace around. We'll talk about becoming both vulnerable and a truly brave leader because your leadership is about to take a whole new turn. In business environments where the ego-driven action of leaders have been mistaken for bravery and the coerced submission of their teams follow shit, the culture has grown toxic. In organizations where leaders are not brave and vulnerable, creativity and innovation are stifled. So let us start with the toxic work culture. There's a feeling that everyone has when they make mistakes at work. For some, it could be a feeling of certainty, void or fear. And that stems from their confidence that this is learning. But for others, this tends to be a feeling of uncertainty, fear, despair, and even this sick feeling in the pit of their stomach. Interestingly, for many employees, Failure is something they attempt to avoid at all costs. And that is because of how it makes them feel. You could say incompetent. Simply put, when people make mistakes or mess up at work, they switch to self-protective mode. Brene Brown inspires us to think about a workplace culture that is a byproduct of true leadership. She speaks about a positive work environment being one where people have feelings of safety, where they can be vulnerable, make mistakes, and have a shared vision. Any group can thrive and any organization can flourish by knowing its safety, security, and story context. This means that when an organization believes it's safe, unfortunately, what we have come to accept as the dominant workplace culture is the shaming of perceived failure. When employees are chronically afraid of failure, it leads to poor decision-making and hiding of mistakes, which leads us to the proverbial skeletons in the closet that are often discovered when leaders leave the organization or leave their roles. Leaders may sometimes take the form of being dominant and not wanting to admit their failures or may take the stance of being afraid of hurting the feelings of their team members and their peers. And they do that by holding back their feedback and their observations. The damaging effect of this is that in reaction to failure, these toxic organizations resort to blame shifting rather than addressing the real problem. You could say they begin to attack each other rather than attacking the problem. Such behaviors have seen companies crumble because their employees become too afraid to take new steps or explore new frontiers because of the fear of fame. None of these behaviors are productive as they only create a workplace where everyone is walking on eggshells. And ultimately, no one knows who they can really trust. How about the superpower of vulnerability? In most cases, a brave person is expected to keep a lot of things to themselves. But Brené Brown shares that true bravery is about revealing vulnerability and that the true and brave leaders are the ones who own up to their vulnerability. Such acts of bravery mean that we'll always feel vulnerable because we're risking something as leaders. It's not reasonable to think that you can be courageous without feeling some degree of vulnerability. Brave leaders must first understand that vulnerability is never weakness and brave leaders can always create appropriate boundaries 
as to the level of vulnerability that they're willing to share with others. Another insight shared by Brene Brown is that actually more leaders than we can even imagine are quite scared of engaging in tough and crucial conversations. Having honest conversations can be one of the most dreaded duties that leaders face. And by virtue of being a good leader, you must be ready and able to hold these tough conversations. Being honest does not necessarily mean being cruel or lacking with kindness. It simply means being creatively and compassionately critical, being objective, and being willing to offer clear areas where improvement is required. This is because it's not right or productive to hold people accountable for areas where they're struggling, where they don't know what to do. Another leadership insight shared by Brene Brown is that ego can be dealt with. When we're operating in defensive mode, there is a huge tendency to work so hard to protect our egos and to put up facades and walls to prevent ourselves from showing any level of vulnerability or true authenticity. How many times have we prevented ourselves from trying new ventures or stepping out or stepping forward or speaking up because we're afraid of looking a fool or we're afraid of failing? Renee explains how our ego can really negatively affect our leadership. This is where everything that we thought protected us keeps us from being the partners, the parents, the professionals, the people that we wanna be. It can do that so much that we become nervous and anxious about our performance. And unfortunately, I've seen many leaders who in search of self-validation, self-protection, remain stagnant and don't really try anything new or innovative at all that they end up controlling others and intimidating or hurting the people they work with. Instead, what is so needed is that leaders create work cultures and groom their environments to become places where their employees, their team members are not afraid. This could mean that we actually stop rewarding any form of defensive behavior. So what's defensive behavior? So as an example, there are organizations that have adopted uh, what they call a fearless organizational mindset, where leaders share moments of personal stories of vulnerability, failure, regret to their colleagues, their peers, their direct reports. It's incredibly powerful. It breaks down the walls of ego, the facade, the pretending, and the um, barriers to open, honest, authentic, and high value communication. Open communication helps leaders get into the hearts of their employees. And that really is where the power begins, in the heart, in the mind, in the intuition. That's where you really begin to unleash the potential of your team. And this helps them fully embrace their role, their objectives, their goals, their mandate, irrespective of the challenges that they may face. As a leader, also consider recognizing your team members and employees who own up and admit to their mistakes takes a lot of bravery to do so. A leader who dares to lead will always communicate about trust and will not gloss over trending problems, but will do so really honoring the values of the company as they um, openly and compassionately communicate about problems. Make sure to share this video with anyone you know who's seeking to become a better leader. Like this video if you enjoyed it and be sure to subscribe because I've got some great new videos coming up. See you next time.